Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, hello there, you wonderful pet parent. Thank you for joining me again this week. Today, we're talking about what to do, how to talk to your vet when they want to continue to vaccinate your animal and you know better. (laughs) Um, I'm actually going to be referencing an email that Dr. Will Falconer sent out at the beginning of March 2022 because... He is he is just my my go to on uh, over vaccination on titer testing on nose nodes on all the things that, um, gosh I I really dig into when I think of holistic health for my pet. He's also the person that I um, heard first heard about homeopathic medicine from, which you probably heard me talk about. On last week's podcast, if you haven't checked that out, I would definitely recommend going and checking that one out as well, though it is a very different topic from today. So yeah, what do we do when we feel like our veterinarians are pressuring us into doing something that we feel is against the best interest of our pet? So I'm just going to start by going over this email that Dr. Will Falconer sent. It is the Vital Animal News, March 6th, 2022. So he says, in my rabies, knowledge is power course run up. If you you haven't, uh, he has a free like short course on rabies. I would highly recommend that as well. Anyway, he says, I often refer to lame vet excuses used to pressure you into unnecessary rabies vaccines. Unnecessary means your dog or cat already had a rabies vaccine, more likely two or more. When you get the do notice, you could, if you've learned about duration of immunity or DOI, have a valid question. Just a side note before I continue with his email, duration of immunity, I know I've talked about this on some live videos I did on YouTube probably last year, but a brief overview of duration of immunity is the the length of time. So you, if you provide a vaccine to an animal, vaccine does not equal, vaccinization does not equal immunization. Um, in most cases, the presence of that vaccine does trigger an immunization in in the body. What happens is that when that vaccine is introduced, or nosodes, if you're going to go a, a holistic or homeopathic route with your with your pet, they are going to elicit a response in the body, and they are providing information to your pet's body or your body. We're talking about, I mean, we, we get immunized as well. We get vaccinations as well saying when you come into contact with this, right, then your immune system is going to fight it off. And so that duration of immune immunity means that once your pet has received the vaccine and an initial vaccine, we can then test through antibodies. Uh, We can also test uh, memory cells, but that is something that most most places don't do. That's a specialized testing. Um, To say there is is an antibody response to X. In this case, we're talking about rabies. There's an antibody response to it. The body knows to go ahead and fight that off and knows how to fight it off and the duration that your your body, your dog's body, your cat's body knows to do this, well, many, many years, by some studies, more than 10 years, by other studies, indefinitely. So there is certainly a duration of immunity that um, is not going to be up in one year, is not going to be up in three years. You can, you can Once you get a positive titer test, 
your animal is good to go. They have an antibody response. We don't need to continue to vaccinate. That's what we're talking about when we talk about duration of immunity. I hope that makes sense because I kind of went off on a tangent there, but let's get back to Dr. Falconer's email. Okay, so it says when you get the do notice, <laughs> you could, if you've learned about duration of immunity, have a valid question. If immunity to viruses lasts so long, probably lifelong, say veterinary immunologists, why would I want to revaccinate because of an arbitrary rule set at every three years? And that's a good question, right? One of the common and most lame excuses vets will give you goes like this. Now, I'm not vet bashing. I am absolutely not vet bashing. Our veterinarians are incredible. For the most part, they are doing their best. They care about your pets. They are doing what they learned to do in school. They're also highly stressed, overworked, and underpaid. Yeah, I'm not vet bashing. However, I do think there is a very big need for our veterinarians. First of all, we need to we need to take some of the pressure off of our veterinarians. We need to resume a lot of the responsibility that we put on our veterinarians for our pets, um, which will then in turn, ideally, give them the time and the energy to learn about new things, to be able to help our pets better. Anyway, back to this. One of the common and most lame excuses vets will give you goes like this. Well, we have to protect our staff. Think with me here. If your animal is immune already and further vac vaccination doesn't add to that immunity, how would it play out to have Dr. Whitecoat's staff be at risk if you simply said, no, thank you? Would your animal suddenly become wide-eyed, rabid, foaming at the mouth, choking while drinking, and trying to bite everything in reach without the next vaccine? <laughs> That's not how the disease works. Are you with me? It takes the bite of an already rabid animal, puncturing the skin of an unvaccinated animal, to cause the bite to get the rabies virus and become rabid. But your animal becoming rabid by being out of date on a rabies vaccine? Sorry, it never works that way. Any vet claiming so slept through his classes on infectious diseases and how they spread. <laughs> a good retort came through our private vital animal alpha forum recently. A longtime student wisely said, vets don't have to get the boosters to protect themselves. They do titers to check their immunity. If they're not good with doing that for your pets, then they're hypocrites. And it's time to get a new vet. True story, one of my holistic colleagues in New York State was curious about her rabies titer after she graduated. Yes, all vet students get rabies vaccinated typically twice during our clinical years. Without any further vaccines against rabies, she watched her own rabies titer rise for several years. So would you like to use Pam's wisdom to counter this dumb argument? You have our permission. Excessive vaccination is one of the chief ways your animals are harmed. It's your job ultimately, to keep your animals safe from harm. Who but you has more at stake in keeping your charges vital and naturally disease resistant? It is you alone who'll live with the consequences of chronic illness, not your vet. So yeah, I mean, it is our responsibility. We are the, I, I've talked before about having a team, a medical team for our pets that would, yes, it absolutely include an allopathic traditional medicine veterinarian and hopefully an integrative and or holistic veterinarian, possibly even a homeopathic veterinarian. If your dog has cancer, they might also need an oncologist. If your dog has other issues, they might need other uh, specialized forms of medical care. At the top, the very top of this medical team is you because you are your pet's biggest advocate. And you are the ones ultimately who have to make the decisions for your animal. Now, in Dr. Falconer's email, he kind of go he he jumps to another story, but I felt like it was also very valid. So he has a picture of a beautiful chocolate lab. His name is Bentley. He says Bentley is one lucky dog. Why? His owner, John Flick, has successfully navigated with his integrative vet's help a way out of Maryland's rabies law. 
We had a short visit on email about Bentley picking up a very dead, dried out bat last summer. Now, of course, this is Dr. Falconer talking. I agreed that John's concerns over getting another rabies shot for Bentley were legit. And there was no risk from a dehydrated bat having any live rabies virus. Besides, Bentley likely had a stout rabies titer from his previous vaccines. And aside, you should be concerned with your dog picking up a paralyzed bat flopping around on the ground. That's often how rabid bats present. Well, John stopped by again to share his good news this week. He stood his ground with his vet when Bentley was due for another three years rabies vaccine. Not doing it. Why did John take this bold stance? Here's what John said. My dog had seizures after his booster at four years old. Very common, actually. I refused the booster this year at seven years of age. My vet agreed to titer in Kansas. Kansas State University does titer testing. Titer came back high, and a new document for 2024 was given to titer, not vaccinate. John Flick in Maryland. So awesome, right? Boom. When Dr. Will Falconer says, keywords, I refused the booster. Bonus words, my vet agreed to titer. His vet wisely recognized the seizures as a result of the past rabies vaccination, not uncommon as rabies is a nervous system virus, and used this in his document to not vaccinate Bentley further. Now, is Maryland a state that accepts titers in lieu of more rabies vaccines? No. To my knowledge, only Delaware has deemed a positive titer alone to be acceptable to avoid more rabies vaccine. 18 states have provisions for unwell dogs to get a vet waiver letter instead of more shots. So did his state bend the rules for Bentley and John? No. But this wise, passionate veterinarian now has his waiver letter and Bentley's title results on file. Kudos to this good doctor. I'd sure like to see all vets in a similar situation take a stance like this on behalf of a dog with excellent immunity and a known duration of immunity of years, if not life. Health before profits? What a concept. <laughs> so while, of course, that, that email is from Dr. Will Falconer, those are two different topics in his email, I felt they went really, really well together. Of course, if you're not already on Dr. Will Falconer's email list, I highly recommend you do so. I look forward to his emails. I look forward to his podcast. I highly recommend the Vital Animal podcast as well. I think titers are a very important part of our animal's medical journey, of their health journey. I completely understand the need to eradicate nasty, nasty diseases like rabies and parvo and distemper. I also understand, and, and I am not against these vaccines, what I am against is over-vaccinating. And if my animal has a, an immune response, if they have an antibody response, if they can show on a titer that, yes, there is an antibody response, then we do not need to vaccinate further, making these laws in most, in all states, really outdated and antiquated. So there are organizations, uh, Dr. John Robb with Protect the Pets law is one of them, lobbying different states to alter these rabies laws. And as we mentioned, or as Dr. Will Falconer mentioned, with this dog Bentley, first, first and foremost, these vaccines right there on the vials that these vaccines come in, it says that they are only for healthy pets. If your pet is not healthy, they do not qualify to even get these vaccines. And if your pet has had vaccine reactions in the past, they do not qualify to receive another one of those vaccines. This is so important and why it is so vital that you take your role as your pet's first, primary, possibly only advocate very, very seriously. So let's, let's break this down. What happens when your veterinarian is just, nope, you've got to get this vaccine. First and foremost, try to have a rational conversation with them. Ask them why they think, depending on what is going on with your animal, one, why they think an unhealthy animal should be getting this vaccine when it clearly states on the label that it's only for healthy pets. 
Or if that's not the case, and <laughs> let's be honest, in most pets in the United States, yeah, they're not healthy for one reason or another. Um, allergies. <laughs> allergies mean your pet isn't healthy. Skin irritation means your pet isn't healthy. Um, eye discharge, ear infections, the list goes on and on and on. Cancer, um, I mean, any and everything that is a health concern means your pet is not healthy enough for vaccination. Outside of that, <laughs> even if your pet is healthy enough for vaccination, if they've already had uh, their initial vaccines, then we should be titer testing to make sure that that level of immunization is present before blindly adding more vaccines into the body because these vaccines, when we're over vaccinating, if your pet already has immunity, certainly, arguably, ha can do more harm than good. So with that, have these conversations with your veterinarian. Don't be rude. Don't yell and scream. Calmly, politely have these conversations with your veterinarian. Ask them these questions. If you don't like the answers, you are free to find another veterinarian. Dr. Will Falconer says all the time, fire your vet. Like that, talk with your money, S -s -s scream with your pocketbook, right? Is it the easy route? No. Short term? No. But is it better in the long term? Absolutely. My opinion. I think it's a pretty good one. So <laughs> with that, I would love to hear from you about this as well. Make sure to reach out to me on all of the, the social medias. I Let's have a conversation. Let's get a conversation with this going on um, on Patreon. If you're not part of the Patreon family, I do hope you join. You can go to, well, you can go to Patreon and search Jessica Fisher, search the Pet Parenting Reset, and I'll pop up. But if um, you go to the petparentingreset.com, there's a link right there at the top of the page for Patreon. That might be the easiest way for you to get there. You can join for as little as a dollar a month. It helps me to continue to bring content like this to you. Uh, plus, you get all new and exclusive content over there. You get behind the scenes, you get first look, you get lots lots of stuff, lots of stuff over there that only Patreon supporters get. So for as little as a dollar a month, I do hope to see you join the family. With that, I'm going to go ahead and end today's podcast. I hope this was helpful. I really do. Wherever you're listening to this podcast, I hope you rate it. I hope you're following the podcast. Rating the podcast is one of the best ways to get this podcast recommended and out there to other people. Imagine how how big a change we could make if more pet parents heard messages like this. So share it, share the podcast with anybody, you know, that has pets as well. That would be, that would be incredible. I, I, I bet they would thank you for it. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the podcast today until next week. Give your pets some extra love from me. Bye guys. Oh, oh.